Hello everybody, it's Sarah, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be tier ranking every single book that I've read so far in 2023. Before we begin, hello, how is everybody doing? I know it's been a little while since I last posted a video and I apologize for that, but life has been so hectic lately. Um, there has been a lot of things going on. I'm pretty overwhelmed, to be honest. To give you an idea of the range of the things that I've experienced in the last couple of weeks, I've started dating someone and I also at some point ended up in the hospital because of a terrible migraine. So, yeah. <laughs> Let's just say life has been a lot. I also saw Taylor Swift live for the first time in years and honestly, that alone, I needed a few business days to recover from. So yeah, this is why I haven't been posting as much on my channel as I would love to. My uploading schedule so far this year is such a mess and I do apologize for that, but we are here, we're back. I feel like I haven't talked a lot about all of the books that I've read so far this year. I've talked about a couple of them when I did like a reading update a couple of weeks ago maybe like a couple of months ago at this point i feel like we need an update we need to chat we need to catch up so this is what we're going to be doing today but yeah without any further ado let's start this tier ranking and let's begin by looking at our tiers the tiers that we have today the first one is of course a masterpiece so these are the books that i really 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 enjoyed this year these are the five stars the absolute bangers, like my new favorites that I discovered in 2023 so far. Then after that, we have Immaculate Reread because I am in my rereading era. I have been rereading so many books in the last couple of weeks, mainly. I created that tier because I didn't want to put all of these books into a masterpiece because I do tend to reread favorites. So I feel like the masterpiece tier needed to be different from the reread tier. Anyways, then our third tier is a banger. Um, these are the books that are not like new favorites, but they're great books that I've read this year. Like they don't actually fit into the masterpiece category, but they're still amazing. And I still think that you should read those. Moving on, we have the eh tier, which is basically like this book was fine. It wasn't anything special. It's a little bit forgettable. I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with it, but I did not really enjoy it. I don't think I'm going to ever reread it or like if it's a part of a series, I keep on going with the series. And then the last year is absolutely not with the dagger emoji, um, <laughs> which honestly is just like this book was not it. Um, but I don't think that I'm going to have lots of books in this category because I have read lots of great books so I feel like this one is gonna be pretty much empty but yeah these are the tiers now let's get into tier ranking because otherwise we're gonna really be here for hours so the first book that we have here is a fire endless now this is the sequel to a river enchanted which I read last year and really really enjoyed um this sequel however I think I'm going to put into eh because while I really, really enjoyed the first book, the sequel, I feel like, wasn't really necessary. I'm glad that I read it because I wanted to see how the story would end, but the first one was so good that this one kind of fell a little bit flat for me. Then we have A Rogue of One's Own by Evie Dunmore. This is the second book into the Extraordinary Woman romance series. I think that's how it's called. And this is a series that basically follow all of these suffragist women who study at Oxford. This is one of the many books that I reread this year. And honestly, it was a banger. I'm not going to put it into Immaculate Reread because I feel like there are some books that I reread this year that I enjoyed more than this, but this was so much fun. Like this is the classic historical fiction romance with all of the ridiculous scenarios. I do think that in this series, some of the male characters are like questionable um but this one was actually kind of a surprise because i actually enjoyed it like way more the second time around um speaking of questionable male character we're gonna have to talk about bringing down the juke next um this is the first book in that same series and i'm gonna have to put it in eh because some of the things that the main love interest did and taught in this book because this is one of the like very few far in between romance series in which you get like both of the characters perspective like this guy has issues okay <laughs> it's not that bad but it's just like sometimes i'm just like sir are you okay um so yeah it goes into this category then we have a rule against murder it's kind of annoying that these are not in order but it's fine and this was an immaculate reread this is i think the 
fifth book in the Louise Penny mystery novel series and I really really love this one. This one is kind of like a classic whodunit mystery in like an enclosed setting and you have all of these characters that like mistrust one another, there are fancy rich people involved and it's just so so good. Then we have Crooked Kingdom which of course is going to have to go in, at the top of the immaculate reread tier. I mean of course you know every single time I reread Six of Pros and Crooked Kingdom it's just masterpiece beautiful incredible and yes i did reread this one when season two of shadow and bone came out because i was kind of disappointed with what they did with kanej in the second season and i needed to go back to the Immaculate Canon. <laughs> then we have Demon in the Wood. This is the Darkling origin story graphic novel that came out last year and this one was just, it, it was fine. It was fun. I don't necessarily care that much about the Darkling to be honest, but it was still fun to be like back into the Grishaverse for a hot second. This literally took me like half an hour to read. So honestly, it wasn't like a big waste of my time, but it wasn't anything very memorable either. Then we have Down Comes the Night by Alison Staff and I think that this one I'm actually going to put into absolutely not because this book wasted my time. Is it kind of my fault because I should have just DNF'd it and moved on? Absolutely. Will I still be bitter about it? That too, yeah. <laughs> then we have Empire of Exiles by Erin M. Heavens. This was one of our picks for the Thieves Book Club and this one I'm gonna put it to eh. Honestly, if there was a category between eh and absolutely not, I wouldn't put it there. But this book wasn't terrible. It just was weird in its execution. This is basically like a mystery novel that takes place into a fantasy city. And the premise sounded so interesting and so great to me. But then I started reading it and it was the most confusing book I've ever read. And I've read three Brandon Sanderson books this year, okay? So that tells you something. This book just did not explain anything about the world building or about like the magic system or the characters. It just basically like threw you in and expected you to just like figure it out somehow. Um, while also being very info dumpy, which was very strange and it was just not a great time And I know that it wasn't just me because everybody that read it for the book club was also confused Then we have the fountains of silence by Ruta Sepetis and this one was a banger Honestly, Ruta Sepetis is slowly but surely becoming one of my new favorite historical fiction writers And like I know that literally everybody and their mothers love Ruta Sepetis, but like you don't understand she is god dear She is great. So yeah I really really enjoyed The Fountains of Silence not as much as Salt to the Sea which I read last year and it completely like destroyed me this one wasn't as soul wrecking as uh, th that other one but yeah I just really really loved it I had a great time and seeing it here makes me really really want to read another Ruta Sepetis book so I feel like I'm gonna have to do that soon I had to get myself a snack because I was getting hungry so let's have some freeze-dried peach stripes together if I can open God. Hello? Okay, there we go. All right, let's keep on going. <laughs> oh, we are absolutely coming back with a bang because the next book that we have is Happy Place by Emily Henry and this one is going straight to Masterpiece. Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> I do not know how Emily Henry does it, but every single time she writes a new book, she makes her main characters so relatable to me personally, and I feel so seen by her books in a way that is almost like too much, like in a way that I'm just like, no, stop, please stop. Like, I do not want to unpack all of this. And Emily Henry is just like, no, we're going to unpack it and you're going to cry about it. And then you're going to feel so seen um, that no other book will ever compare. And she did it again. Like, I don't know how she does it, but she did it again. It was too much. It was too much. <laughs> so yeah, Happy Place like made me feel violently seen in the best way possible and it is definitely one of the best books that I've read this year so far if you still haven't read it please pick it up um, because I need people to like cry with me about it it was so good oh my god <laughs> then the next book that we have here is Hellbent by Lee Bardugo and this one was a banger like it was solid the Nine House series is not my favorite of Lee Bardugo's but it's still a great time and I'm still very intrigued to see how she's going to wrap it up into the third book and also Alex Stern and Darlington have my heart so I will read if only to know what happens to them <laughs> Then the next book that we have here is Legends and Lattes. This is also a book that we read for the Thieves Book Club. And I think that this one I'm going to put in 
eh? Like, it's in between eh and a banger. Um, if there was like a middle tier, it would be into the middle tier because I enjoyed that book and I definitely really, really had a great time reading it, but I don't think it's that memorable. I feel like a lot of people hype it up so much on the internet and I totally understand why because it's adorable and like the characters are very lovable and it's just a fun time when you want to read like something cozy, but it also is not like the most like groundbreaking book ever. I don't think it has to be. I was just hoping for a little bit more from it. Then the next book that we have is Night House by Lee Bardugo. This was obviously a reread. I had read this one um, I think like three years ago when it first came out and I needed to refresh my memory before I dived into Hellbent. I think I'm gonna put this one into a banger as well because I did not enjoy it as much as all of these other immaculate rereads. Then next we have Oldbringer by Brandon Sanderson but I'm actually going to start with Words of Radiance because I'm getting annoyed at the fact that these are not in series order. Um, so yeah, Words of Radiance, Oldbringer, and Rhythm of War all go into Masterpiece. Obviously, I've been gushing about these books since the beginning of this year. Um, I am in love with the Stormlight Archive series by this author. It is incredible and I will just never shut up about it now because it has become one of my favorite fantasy series of all time. And like Brandy Sandy just never lets me down, um, but he really, really delivered with this series. So yeah, they definitely deserve to be into the Masterpiece tier. Definitely, these are some of my favorite books that I've read this year. So so far and I don't think that many other books will top them to be honest. Um, then we have The Priory of the Orange Tree, another big fantasy book and this one I'm gonna put into Immaculate Reread. Um, I just love the world of The Priory of the Orange Tree. No, I still haven't read The Day of Fallen Night. It is very embarrassing. I need to fix that very very soon but yeah Priory is just one of these books that I enjoy so so much I know it is not for everyone I know that some people think that it has pacing issues I personally just don't really care because I got so attached to the characters and to the world and how intricate everything is that like I just I just enjoy the ride every single time then the next book that we have here is Senditon by Jane Austen I'm gonna put this one into a banger because while I enjoy any and all Jane Austen novels, these are unfinished stories, so they don't hit as hard as her other books, but they were still so, so, so good, obviously, because it's Jane Austen and she's like a queen and I love her. Then we have Six of Pros. I don't even have to like say anything. This one obviously goes into Immaculate Reread. Um, just incredible, beautiful, show-stopping, never the same, a masterpiece. I love it. Um, then we have Spike's Family Volume 1 and I think I'm gonna put this one into eh, to be honest, and I think the problem is not the manga, the problem is me because I feel like every single time I try to read a manga series, if I only have the first one at my disposal, I just never keep on going with the series. It's kind of like a webcomic for me, um, where if I want to get really, really invested in the characters and the story, I have to devour the whole thing in one sitting. And because I just never can get my hands on all of the volumes of that manga series at once because they're always out at the library and I don't want to buy all of them because they're expensive. Um, I just didn't really get like invested in the story. I thought that it was very very cute and fun but I just didn't have like the momentum to keep on going. Then the next book that we have here is Still Life by Louise Penny. This is the first book in the series and I don't know if I should put it into Immaculate Reread or a banger. Hmm. It is a very very comforting book for me to read just because it's the first one and it has like all of that nostalgia attached to it so I think I'm gonna put it into Immaculate Reread. I don't think it's the strongest of the series especially since this was obviously her debut novel and she has written like so many more books since but it is still like such a fun time. The mystery is well done as well. Then we have The Brutal Telling which I think is book... wait I said a rule against murder was book five it is book four i think and i think this one is book five i'm getting confused but yeah the brutal telling also immaculate so good the mystery in that one just really keeps you on the edge of your seat and it has like such a dramatic ending and like such a brutal reveal um and then we have the cruelest month which is the third book and this one i think i'm gonna put into a banger the next book that we have here is the forgotten garden by kate morton this was another book that we read for the tv's book club and i'm gonna have to put this one into a eh as well because while i really really enjoyed it this is kind of like a historical fiction novel that is also like dual timeline so you have people in the present and there's like a family mystery at play um i think this one was a little bit forgettable for me 
sadly um but yeah i still enjoyed it and i would still recommend it because i thought it was definitely very very fun and it had a great atmosphere but it's just not like one of these that i think like oh my gosh this was incredible then we have the hunger games this is actually the last book that i finished i finished this yesterday and oh my god i read these books for the first time like 10 years ago and they still hold up this book was incredible susan collins is a genius it was so so good like if there is one YA series from the 2010s that still holds up to this day it is the hunger game i mean i still haven't reread the second and the third book but i am so certain that they're going to be just as good the second time around and i honestly had such a blast rereading this it was incredible and i am team pita forever he's the greatest um anyways the last book that we have here is the very secret society of irregular witches which is a very cozy like fantasy romance book that i also really really enjoyed i'm going to put this one in a banger it was so much fun it was so cute like if you just want a cute fuzzy fantasy romance this one is definitely for you the characters were just so sweet and it was overall so much fun all right so these are all of the books that i've read so far this year it's funny to see them organized like that because i can tell that there aren't like that many new absolute favorites but also i've read such incredible books and i'm just having so much fun rereading favorites and honestly this reading year so far has been great thankfully so much better than last year and i can only hope that it just keeps on going that way because i have so many books that i'm excited to dive into and i hope that they become new favorites as well let me know in the comments what is your favorite book that you've read this year so far and also if you've read any of these books let me know what you thought of them and i hope that you enjoyed this video i hope that it was entertaining and i will see you hopefully soon in my next one bye